Hello and welcome back to History of Wine and the Vine. I'm Emily Kate. Today's topic is Ancient Rome. We'll discuss how wine was made, what it might have tasted like, who drank it and when, and then we'll finish up with a tasting. The ancient Romans used a wine press to create their wine. The baskets of the grapes in the vineyard were tossed into these areas shaded in green. They're called tabulatum, or singular tabulata, and they were plaster-lined compartments. The juice that came from the weight of the grapes themselves was called petropum, and it was used to make the highest quality wine. The grapes then got moved to the treading floor, or forum venarium, and were crushed by barefoot workers who stomped on them to separate the juice, or mustum. The mustum then traveled to the intermediate vat, where a jar collected the dregs, like skins, pips or seeds, and stems. The mustum moved from the intermediate vat into the lacti musti. This was a two-part sedimentation system made up of a large basin put into the bedrock with a deeper hole at its center. This hole collected the dregs. Each vintner would have been responsible for decanting their mustum into dolia, or large jars, for primary fermentation. The once pressed grapes were then tossed onto a cylindrical limestone slab called Archilopidium. It was centered on the treading floor. This served as the lower part of a mechanical press. The top part was a wooden slab with handles. They were both mounted onto a vertical screw and then pressed together. The juice from this was called Mustum Tortivum and was used to make wine of low quality or medicinal wine. So what did ancient wine taste like? Well, there's a lot of different things that you can do to a wine to change the taste. You can alter things at the vineyard, at the winery, or at the table. The ancient Romans did all of this. So at the vineyard, there was a practice of growing certain plants nearby the vine in hopes that by sheer proximity that they would infuse some type of flavor. Now, that didn't really work, but what did work was raisin wine. So the ancient Romans would take the grapes and lay them out in the sun in the vineyard. And what this would do is it would draw some of the water content out of the grapes and concentrate the sugar. Now, when you think about the fermentation process, it consists of sugar plus yeast, which yields alcohol, carbon dioxide, and heat. So the more sugar that you have relative to water, um, the more concentrated that your final uh, wine will be, which means that this wine would have tasted very, very sweet, as well as would have been very high in alcohol content. Now, moving on to the winery. Uh, in the winery, the amphora were what the wine was stored in. So these were terracotta jars and they were sealed with pitch. Now this pitch, depending on how long the wine was stored in the amphora, would actually impart flavor into the wine. This flavor was something like resin. So the Greek wine Retsina, if you're curious about what this resin tastes like, would have a lot of resin and you're actually able to taste it in the wine. Now also, much like today's uh, non-vintage champagne, um, there was a lot of blending that happened in ancient Rome. So they would blend vintages, but also, if you recall that we talked about the different presses that happened um, in the wine press, they had different types of wine come out of each, and they were different uh, levels of quality. So the different levels of quality could be blended together to create a different wine. Also, at the table, a lot of changes happened. So it was customary to blend in different ingredients in to make a wine beverage. So ingredients like herbs. They could be herbs that you found on a hillside, like hazelwort, or it could be herbs that you grew in your garden, like juniper or thyme. Or it could be herbs from very far away lands. Um, some people mix saffron into their wines, and this was reserved for only the best, most expensive, 
exclusive wines and these wines would be really really fragrant and lovely and would have been delicious. So when were Romans drinking these wines? Well they were drinking them at something called a convivium. A convivium is a large banquet. Now this banquet would have different courses of rare and fine foods. It would also have music and acrobats and mock battles for people to watch and was quite a spectacle. And on the table or in the room at this convivium would be something called a crater. So it was a huge jug essentially with an open top and whereas today we use bottles, uh, they would serve their wine straight out of the crater. The crater was actually used to mix wine and water. So this was a very common uh, way of drinking your wine, was mixing it with water. And actually there was something called an alphepsa and this would hold wa uh, water for the guests and they could go up with their cups and actually mix with the wine, the wine and water ratio to taste. So it could be different for everybody. Now, the convivium was one thing, but there was something called a commissatio, which was could have happened after the convivium as a kind of ancient Roman after party, where there was no food um, and it was just drinking. This has more in common with the Greek symposium, where it would be general revelry, debauchery, and whatnot. Now, if you think that in ancient Rome, wine was just for drinking, you would be wrong. Because there was an ancient um, emperor named Igalibus who decreed in 218 AD, when he was 14, that his entire bathing pool be filled, instead of water, with wine for he and his courtiers to bathe in. Now, if you think that's crazy, and it happened in 218 AD, you might want to take a look at this. This is the Beaujolais Nouveau Spa. It's located in Japan and was opened in 2007. Okay, so now for the tasting. We'll see what one of these wines actually tasted like. I'd like to try to end each segment with a tasting of an ancient or medieval wine. And if you are looking for a brush up on the different terms or you're interested in learning how to feel what these certain terms mean, um, I'll film a little uh, catch up video and I'll link it down in the description box. So if you're interested in just brushing up on what the words mean or figuring out how to express yourself about wine, just check out that video and that'll clarify some things. So for uh, today's tasting, I'm going to taste a recipe that I got from Columella, who's an ancient uh, writer, and this is a very simple recipe that sounds really good. It's very similar to mead. So if you've ever heard of mead from the Middle Ages, it's honey and wine. So that's exactly what I'm going to do today. Um, this is actually called mulsum. So it would have been served at the convivium. It would have been served with the hors d'oeuvres, believe it or not. And the hors d'oeuvres would have been very, very salty. And this wine will taste very sweet. So what I have here is an Italian wine. Let's see if you can see that. Um, an Italian wine that I actually got uh, in the city at Gotham Wines. And then I just have a little... Uh, bear of honey. So I'm going to mix that, grab my red wine glass. I'm going to put some of this wine in. Then I'm going to mix some of the honey. And I'll let you see as I do this. some of the honey in and this would have been first wine of the night. I'll mix this together. Now Columella, whose recipe we're following, actually called for patropum to be used um, in this recipe, which meant that it was, if you recall, 
that's the free run juice. So that's the juice that was simply from the weight of the grapes in the vineyard. Um, once it was put in the press, that was just the first juice that ran off, which means that it would not have been fermented yet. So it would essentially just be grape juice at that point. Um, but later on, a different writer named Pliny came along and suggested that you use already fermented wine in this recipe, and that's what we're doing today. So I'll put this over here, and I'll begin the tasting. It smells really sweet. The wine and the honey are not exactly mixing, I guess to the same extent that they might if you let it sit for a long time. But we'll smell a little bit. So first what you want to do in a tasting is you want to look at the wine with a white background. So this is a dark, dark, dark red wine. And then you smell it. Ruby color. Mmm. You can kind of smell the honey. You smell kind of red, cherry, some plum. It smells really delicious. Wow, that is great. Um, you can actually taste the honey within the wine. It's very sweet and it pairs really nicely with um, the fruit flavors that are already in the wine. It's really great. It's as though you've poured some honey right over some plums or cherries, blackberries. It's really bramble, very delicious kind of dark red fruits. And the honey really does add to it. It makes it almost like a sweeter novelty wine beverage. Definitely very different from how regular wine tastes, but very delicious. So this is a very easy recipe for you to make at home if you're interested in trying it. Um, and you too can taste what the wines tasted like at the Convivium in ancient Rome. So I hope you try it. If you do, taste it. Let me know down in the comment section how it tasted, if you liked it or not. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.